Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am using a molded stone I made uh, using a mold from Happy Dotting Company, whom I love. Um, don't pay attention too much yet. Uh, this mold is close to five inches. I'm not sure which number that is, but it's amazing. Make sure you check out Happy Dotting Company on Etsy. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make like a frame um, and then on the inside, we're going to do a cute little creature. Um, but what I need to do first is create circle, a circle frame. Um, so what I've used is a compass and a, and a pencil and ignore the double frame because I'm going to be getting rid of that. I'm going to be actually painting that outer frame completely gold. And then we're going to crackle it, um, which you've seen me do before, but if not, take a look at my tutorials just look up rachel's rocks crackle and probably all of my crackle tutorials will come up super easy um so i'm painting it gold i'm just using folk art mayan gold uh it's my favorite gold although it is kind of thick so i do like water it down sometimes with a little bit of water but you can buy mediums that um thin out your paint properly scientifically artistically <laughs> whatever I use water <laughs> so I'm painting this outer ring black but it's actually going to become much thinner it's not going to be this thick and the rest is just going to be gold on the inside we are going to do a gradual shift from one shade of blue to another because uh, it's going to kind of resemble water because this is an aquatic creature. It's actually an amphibian and it is called, uh-oh, am I going to even say it right? Axolotl. An axolotl. Yeah, but it's going to be a cute Christmassy axolotl. Thank you, ma'am, for helping me pronounce that word. Axolotl. <laughs> so we're going to paint a holiday axolotl. Um, I'm going to be dotting mine. You don't have to, but I'm going to just because I haven't dotted something in a little while, kind of feeling the need. Um, but by all means, you do it how you want to. I'm just going to give you some inspiration. Uh, along the way, I have a few tips and tricks that I like to share. Um, so yeah, my first tip is don't waste your time making that big, thick black line because that's not going to be there. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here all week. Um, so yeah, just ignore all the time that I'm spending on this area. I'm going to use this time to tell you how much I've missed you. <laughs> um, I'm also going to be using a medium called Crackle Medium. And you can buy it online. You can buy it at Michael's, Joann's. Uh, maybe even Walmart. I just scraped off that center bump because I don't really need it. Uh, I'm not doing any kind of dotted work uh, in a symmetrical design like a mandala. Um, so yeah, I scraped that off. Just got rid of it. You can sand it off using a little nail file. Uh, I just got rid of the bump. Yeah. So I'm going to use three different shades of blue. Aqua, teal, and a drift. You don't have to use the same colors. Just go from dark, medium to light. I'm starting with the dark at the bottom and I'm using my little finger sponges. Link in the description. Um, so this is the darker color at the bottom, which is teal. Then it's aqua. And then I'm going to use the lighter color, which is a drift. It's kind of like almost a bluish mint. Um, and I think it's really pretty. And once I blend all of these colors in, and uh, make it the way I want it to, that's going to be our watery background, our aquatic background. So I'm using a different sponge for each color of blue. Don't mix them up because it just makes a mess of things. So use each sponge individually in each color. It just makes things a little bit less messy. And yeah, blend it till you think it looks okay, but try and do it while the paint's still wet. So there, that's tip number two, blend while the paint is wet <laughs> and still ignore that big, thick black line. And I have a little bottle of water with a little bit of water in it. I throw my sponges in there, put the lid on, shake them up, get them all wet, 
so that that paint doesn't dry on them. Then I'm going to rinse them out with soap and water later when I'm done. Not right now. I'm busy. So I'm going to find my outline around that blue area, the watery area. Um, I just found it again using my fine lining brush where the link is also in the description because I love you. Um, and yeah, I'm just making sure that this is nice and perfect in my eyes. It doesn't have to be perfection. As you can see, I'm not using any kind of tools at this point. I'm just going by eyes. So it's not going to be symmetrical when I'm done, but you're still going to kind of see it as a circular area. <laughs> so that's really all that matters to me. I do not do well with being perfect. I, I don't like it. So I'm still <laughs> thickening my line, although that's going to disappear. So ignore it. So now, <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> I was waiting for the grand moment where that line disappears. So I'm literally filling it all in with gold now. I'm going to do two coats of gold. I'm probably going to use a sponge to kind of get rid of all those brush strokes within the gold. Um, I find that the crackle might uh, work better if I don't have too much like thick pieces of paint here, thin pieces there, brush strokes here, there. So I am going to sponge it down and make it like an even coat of gold and let it dry really, really good. It kind of looks like I'm looking into a hole of water right now. Kind of looks cool. <laughs> That's just my opinion. You let me know what you see. Um, or a jewel, a jewel of some sort. So I'm letting that gold dry. And now I'm doing a thin outline, just a thin one. You'll see what happens with that later, but don't do a thick one. Ignore the thick ones, even though thick ones are beautiful. I am a thick one. <laughs> I have no problem with thick ones, but this time we're going to do it thin. And now everything is dry. I'm going to use the crackle medium. Now what you do with the crackle medium is you put it in a sandwich. So acrylic paint is the bread and the crackle medium is whatever you want in your sandwich. Okay. That's the best way for me to describe it. The crackle medium has to be sandwiched, sandwiched between two acrylic paints in order for the crackle to work. So acrylic paint on the bottom, which is the gold, we've put our deliciousness, which is the crackle medium on top of our first piece of bread which is the gold. Then we're letting it dry and I'm going to try and draw an axolotl. <laughs> As you can see, if you've been counting, go back, take a drink for every time I've erased this and started over. It'll be a fun game. Uh, no children allowed to do that. Nope. No. Have a fruit snack every time I erase it all and start over <laughs> if you're a child under the age of 18. Um, but yes, I am letting the medium dry on top of that gold really, really good. And then we're going to go back in and throw that top layer of bread, which is going to be another acrylic paint. We're going to do that later, 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 way later. Um, but for now, I finally stopped erasing and I kept it a certain way and now I'm finding it with gold paint because what I'm going to do is I'm going to dot it like I mentioned earlier you don't have to you can fill it in with color and go from there it's totally optional but I wanted to dot it and I'm also going to dot it uh, in purples so it's not going to be your standard um, amphibian color None of this is going to be standard because, well, it's Rachel's Rocks. So it's going to be dotted and it's going to be purple. And it's going to have Christmas bulbs hanging off of <laughs> its outer gills. Are those external gills? Someone correct me. Please do. I have not looked up the actual names, scientific names of the body parts, but I believe they are external gills. I believe. And they can breathe our air, but they do prefer to be in the water because they are aquatic amphibians. Yeah. 
So I'm literally painting the entire guy in black because I find that my dots stand out way better on top of the black. And he's just going to dry slowly. I'm going to perfect everything, thin areas out that I made too thick with the gold, um, fix anything. Also, if there are any people out there who are going to comment, I understand they do not have five fingers on their front hands, on their hands. And they're probably not even called hands, but they only have four. And I gave him an extra one on one of his hands. And I'm just going to leave it there because I don't mind. But he's special and he has a little extra to him. Yeah. So there. Before you correct me, <laughs> I already know it's wrong, but he's beautiful the way he is. And I'm just going to leave it. Yep. <laughs> so I've also outlined it very carefully with black um, so that it stands out from that blue background. Um, it kind of separates all the parts from everything as well when you outline it with black. So I've done that. I've made sure that all my gold is showing up and that there's a black outline. So everything's going to be nice and tidy. And then we're going to color it in kind of like a coloring book. But I'm going to use a dotting needle, which is very similar to a toothpick, only it's made of stainless steel. So it's a little bit heavier. It's a little bit easier for me to use. It's a little bit longer than a toothpick, um, but a toothpick will work perfectly fine for this as well. If you plan on, if you plan on doing the dots, if you know what I'm saying. So yeah, there's his cute little smiley mouth. He's going to be very smiley because he's surprising us with Christmas ornaments on his external gills. <laughs> <laughs> is there another term? I don't like saying the word gills for some reason. So if there's another term I can use, please leave it in the comments. Um, I'm still accepting your ideas as well for uh, future tutorials, either now or after the new year. Um, now the colors I've chosen, I don't know what to call him. I, I, he doesn't really have a name. So also if you can think of a name let me know. Uh, he's super cute though. The colors I'm using are going to be uh, lavender, light lavender, and wisteria. So three different shades of purple. I'm using lavender and light lavender on his gills. Then I'm using lavender, which is the darkest one, on his tail thingamajiggy. That's a thingamajiggy in the amphibian world. And uh, in places where there might be a little bit of shading, so like under his chin and uh, like in his armpits and maybe down by his leg, I'm going to use go between lavender and um, wisteria. The rest of his body is going to be wisteria, which kind of has a bit of a tint. I would say it like a little bit of blue to it, almost um, but it still goes really, really super nice with those purples. So you choose the color you want to do. If you're going to just paint him, start with white. Don't start with black. Um, I probably should have said that a while ago, but hopefully you watch this first and then go back and get all your stuff ready and then be like, okay, good thing she said that because I was going to do it in black. Um, yeah, if you're just going to paint it with a paintbrush or sponge or whatever, uh, start with a nice bright white. Do a couple coats of white. Once you get your shape down really good, um, you can still outline it with gold if you want, but you don't have to. Just outline it with black so that it separates it from that blue water. So the rest of him is wisteria. And uh, like I said, it's like a really light, light, light purple, but I believe there's like a little bit of blue in that. To me, it just kind of seems that way. Isn't he cute? Oh, kind of looks like a, a George, but I don't know. You guys let me know. Now for the rest of the sandwich. I'm using a nice big brush and I'm swiping it on real fast. I'm just trying to stay close to that black line. We can go back and fix it if we go over, but don't go over that blue. 
Don't go over the blue. It's going to start crackling immediately. It's already doing that as I speak. Um, so that's going to be really pretty and kind of Christmassy as well. It just kind of adds to the Christmas uh, aspect of our little axolotl. Axolotl. Um, so yeah, he's going to have kind of like earrings, but not really. They're Christmas ornaments, but he's wearing them like earrings. He's trying to be funny. He is trying to be a big joker. He thinks he's funny. So he's like surprising us with Christmas ornaments on his gills. So cute. So I'm using my gold. We're not dotting these ornaments, although you can if you want to. Um, but I'm kind of incorporating like a little bit of everything so that you can learn from me today. Um, I'm doing Christmas light colors. So like green, red, orange, blue, yellow. I, I was going to do purple, but there's already enough purple. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to choose kind of like Christmas lights colors for his ornaments. Just plain old colors. Not plain, but you know, simple. Nothing too creative. And they're just hanging from his gills from a, a little bit of gold. He's being cute. Um, but yeah, you don't have to dot it. You don't have to put Christmas ornaments on it. You can do whatever you want. Choose the colors you want. But I've shown you a couple of different things. So the crackle technique, the blending of the background, um, dotting, of course, with your, uh, your little axolotl, um, different, using different shades of one color. And yeah, we're going to see it all resined up pretty soon. Uh, he's going to look super cute right in front of my Christmas tree. So I'm putting some more red over there. I did have to scrape away some of the dots there so that I had a bit of a smoother uh, Christmas ornament hanging there. I'm just giving a little bit of a thin black outline off to one side. I'm going to do the same thing with the other ones. And I'm also going to, it might seem a bit strange, but I'm going to kind of finish off the border. It kind of looks like he's sitting in a bowl <laughs> now, like a nice, beautiful, like antique bowl with water in it, but he's not, it's just a border. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some gold studs, just gold dots of paint uh, around in that black area that you see in the border. And that's just going to finish it off. That's just going to finish it all off. It's going to look so pretty. But it's not going to um, mess with the other dots too much because it's it's going to be gold. And I love gold. I love it. I love incorporating gold in pretty much everything. <laughs> I don't wear it though. Unless it's white gold. I don't wear yellow gold at all. So I'm just making sure that he's all outlined properly and his arms are separate from his body. I'm going to give him a little glint and gleam in his eyes, a little bit of white. And I'm also going to put a little bit of white on those ornaments to make them look a little shinier as well. So we're going to bring his eyes to life. And uh, yeah, just a little bit of white. His mouth's open. He's smiling. He's like, peekaboo. <laughs> Look what I got into today. He's super cute, but I don't know what his name is. I really don't know. Kind of looks like George or Squid. Maybe Squid. <laughs> you guys are welcome to leave your ideas in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like button if you can. I sometimes forget to do that when I'm watching YouTube videos. So just hit the like. It does seem to get my video out there to more people if you hit the like button. So I appreciate that. Now you can see the gold studs going around the outside. You don't have to do that. You can leave that black ring alone. You could have left it thick. Totally up to you. You could have done a green crackle uh, border instead of red. I used a deep berry wine. Um, I am going to list all the paint colors in the description of this video for you. Just for you. Just in case you're not sure what to use. And you want yours to look very similar to mine. You can do this on a piece of wood. 
on a canvas, on a mailbox, (laughs) on a Christmas ornament. It does not have to be on a handmade rock. You can paint it on a real rock. Don't forget. Now, for the finishing touch, we're going to do some bubbles. I'm using a nail gel top coat. It's a clear top coat nail polish that you use a UV light to dry with. I will leave what I use in the description of the video. I got it all on Amazon. I put it under the light for about a minute and 30 seconds. Uh, Sometimes a little bit longer depending on the type of UV gel I have. And then I just use like a sparkly mirrored chrome powder. It's kind of like a uh, like a bluish color. So I'm putting it right over top of those bubbles once they're dry under the resin or under, sorry, the UV lamp. And then they look like bubbles. So I'm going to add a couple more just in front of his uh, mouth there because of course he's, he's saying surprise. So the bubbles are coming up out of his mouth. (laughs) I have resined him. I've slowed it down so you can see it. Look at his cute little smile. So the bubbles you can still see stand out because of the technique that I use. So you've learned a lot today, guys. I've shown you a little bit of everything. Um, Those bubbles are super cute. He's excited that it's Christmas time. He loves decorations. And he likes to put a smile on your face. So I believe someone did ask me, Um, I believe a couple of times people have asked me for one of these adorable little amphibians. And so finally it's here and you can take the Christmas decorations right off of it and change your coloring. And he doesn't have to be a Christmas axolotl at all. Um, you do what you want. He kind of looks like a little, a little water dragon. (laughs) I love you guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I will see you again soon with a Christmas ornament, uh, or two and, uh, another nice rock that you'll like. So I love you. See you soon. Keep painting and hit the share button as well. Bye.